Can you please explain the disorganized attachment style a little further? Is it basically a mix of anxious and avoidance switching between the two? I would have you conceptualize attachment styles as nervous system responses. Based on the combination between your temperament and your environment, you will decide what frequency of attitude, thought, and behavior will evolve together to create a scope coping skill that eventually becomes frequent enough that we call it an attachment style. If we grew up in environments that were inconsistent, with parents who were rewarding one minute and punishing the next, there was no real consistent way of determining safety. An anxious person might decide that this degree of proximity is safe. An avoidant person might decide that this degree of proximity is safe. So this is when someone is very consistent in their attachment style. What happens with someone who has disorganized attachment style, they never establish that consistency. Whether it's this or this, it's inconsistent. So this is safe on Monday. That is safe on Friday. This is safe on Wednesday. That's safe on Saturday. It was never established. So being together doesn't feel comfortable. Being apart doesn't feel comfortable. Being close feels like a threat. Being far away feels like a threat. So it's not just flip-flopping. It's that you have not established a safe proximity at all. It hasn't been established for you. Not that you can't, but it hasn't been. Because of that, what is more frequent with someone who I would say is more genuinely disorganized is dissociation. So this is when the nervous system, when fight or flight fawning doesn't work. So the nervous system drops into the dorsal and it, it shuts down. And this is when we can have dissociation out of body experiences, derealization, depersonalization, feeling extremely enamored one minute. And then the feelings just switching off the next. I have no idea why I was so into them. I'm not into them anymore right? It could be that there's also discrepancies in storytelling and personal narratives. There's poor memory and poor memory recall. Sometimes this is why people will say sometimes say that their fearful avoidant is gaslighting them, but it's, it's truly that they probably did not encode that information correctly because their brains comparatively also on Regillus research, their brains let us know that the hippocampus looks as damaged for someone who's had severe attachment injuries as it does for war veterans that are diagnosed with PTSD. So, and the hippocampus is so important because you might think of this as like the librarian of your brain. So the amygdala is in the limbic part of the brain and it senses all of the unconscious and instinctual cues from the body. And when we feel under threat, the amygdala goes, wah, 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 wah. and the noise is so loud that our little librarian, the hippocampus, which is usually right next to the amygdala, has to like drop everything they're doing and go run for the bomb shelter. They're not categorizing, tagging, labeling, putting things away in the correct shelves because they're hiding in the bomb shelter. So all the information that you're receiving is just all over the place. It's like confetti thrown about and it's not getting organized in the right way. And so what happens is it becomes kind of lodged in our body in our sinews and in our muscular and in our survival brain not having been properly organized. So that means that sometimes the anxiety comes out of nowhere because there was a trigger there that didn't get stored correctly. That's what trauma work is all about is, is, is getting the wires uncrossed and trying to store all that correctly. So for someone with disorganized attachment, they just have that additional level of, of difficulty in, in negotiating what is that safe proximity and how do I how do I communicate that in the context of psycho-emotional physical spaces, right? So I hope that helps.